Hello everybody and welcome to my series of Covid beating crafts. Most of us have been stuck at home for a while now and we're desperately looking for new things to do. So I decided to do a series of crafts that you can do during your stay at home order even if you don't have any special crafting equipment or materials. And the things I've chosen are suitable for children and for adults and the products will use everyday household items such as gift wrap, Tissue paper, copy paper, cardstock, large envelopes, napkins, food packaging, things like that. So have a look at the first project that I'm going to do with you. And it's a mini photo album. Here it is. If I open it up, you'll see it opens like this, like this, and this, and this. Here we go, this. And this. Uh, you'll see that this one has actually got an Orlando theme. You can make it for your uh, vacation souvenir, you can put wedding photos in, family photos, you can even do drawings or whatever you want to put in. So let's just close it up and you'll see you get more photographs on the back. So as you roll it up you get even more pictures to enjoy. There we go. And it closes with a little half moon there. I've actually marked it in black so you can pick it out. So you need one sheet of scrapbooking paper for this. 12 by 12 inch scrapbook piece if you've got it. Um, I'm going to do, use this one, it's actually double sided so I get a pattern inside and out. But the first one that I've just showed you was with paper like this that's white on the inside and spotty on the outside and I'll show you how I decorated that in a minute. But let's do the easy one here. If you don't have a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper like this you might be able to use a piece of cardstock 8.5 by 11 or even cut yourself a piece of good quality gift wrap. It's all about using what we've already got in the house. You'll also need some basic things like glue, a ruler and a pencil, some scissors, a coin and various other things. Just check out the list below and make sure you've got everything to hand and then you can get started. So I'm starting with this piece of 12 by 12 paper which is 30 centimetres by 30 centimetres if you're in Europe and I'm going to score some lines on it to make those different squares. So we need two vertical lines coming down, one at four inches here, so I'm just scoring down there, and one at eight inches, like that. And then on this side, horizontally, we need three horizontal lines at three inches, six inches, and nine inches. There we go. So I know what you're already going to say, you haven't got a scoreboard. Well don't worry about it, you can do it just as easily by making your marks for where you need the lines, putting a ruler down and then using some sort of blunt edge, this is just a little spreader. Anything that will just make a mark in the card and break the fibres a little bit without cutting it. You can use the back of the scissors, something like that, uh, just to get your marks in there. And once you've made those marks you then need to fold them all, so I'm just folding them up here and I'm going to press along them to make sure that they're nice sharp creases. And the important thing as you fold along these lines that you've just scored is that the edges are level. You're not going off at an angle. So keep those edges together nice and neat. Press along. That's the horizontals and here's a couple of the verticals. It folds really nicely because you've already scored it so it's already finding its own place where it wants to fold nice and neat without getting those nasty um, creases in it. There we go. Now the other thing you can use if you haven't got a bone folder like I did is just use a credit card or a, a gift card like this one and it just makes those folds go nice and neat. So I've got it back and we've now got 12 squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We're actually going to cut some of these away. So we're going to remove number 1 number three, number six, number seven and number twelve. Okay, so when you cut these you're going to follow those score lines roughly but you're actually going to cut away more than that rectangle. Okay, so my fold line is here, I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch bigger than that to take out an even bigger rectangle. And my score line is there so I'm actually going to cut little bit above it and this means that when you fold up the flaps that you've got left they fold really easily inside of the existing fold lines they don't get caught on it see this one's going to be quite narrow 
so here's the fold here we're going to remove these two so I'm cutting below the fold along there and then coming down from the top we want to get rid of these so there's the fold and I'm cutting even bigger along here so that we've got plenty of room to wiggle as we fold a couple more we've got this one to come out so here's the fold and I'm going to cut to the left of the fold and underneath this score fold and then I've got one more to come out here here's the rectangle I'm going to remove I think that was number seven so I'm cutting underneath the score line to the right on this side I'm going to the left of the score line and when we come to the middle you're actually going to score to cut to the right of that as well again taking out just a little bit more than that rectangle was folded down so you'll have a shape something like this now you've got all these pieces that you cut out if you're actually making one that's got single-sided pattern have that on the back and when you cut the pieces out you can then stick them back in place you'll just need to trim about half an inch off two sides and you can place them back that's actually how I did the one that I showed you in the first place but see this is white paper or it started life as white paper but when I cut out those extra squares I actually trimmed them down and inserted them back on the white side for five of them see this one was missing and I just put a bit of a trim on so whether you've got single-sided paper or double you're going to get some pattern underneath your photos let's just try it and make sure that it folds up okay so you fold the sides in first and then roll the side in and roll and finally roll the top over so it needs a bit of a press out there just to help it on its way here we go that's good and this top one the one that's all on its own we're going to make into the flap just like this one here see so we need to cut it a little bit shorter so I'm just going to take my ruler, measure an inch, draw a line and I'm going to cut across it because that flap doesn't need to be as deep as the other levels. Trim it off. And just to make it nice you can just round the corners a little bit while you're here like that. And like that looks a bit more finished okay now we need something that will actually hold that little uh, flap in place remember I showed you this one and I've actually put a black pen round so you could see the little hook we need to do a little bump like that one so first of all we need to decide where we want it we're going to put it here draw a line right along the bottom of where the flap comes down because that's where you're going to want the bump the bump coming out from and then take a coin put it in the middle of your paper and in the middle of that line halfway above it halfway below but you're just going to draw half a moon above it that's all you need okay you might not be able to see that very clearly at the moment let's open it up and we're going to cut it you want to make sure there's nothing underneath it when you do your cutting so bring over a cutting board maybe a kitchen board or something like that and a sharp knife you can use a kitchen knife, a craft knife, or whatever you've got. And then just to keep the guidelines, put your coin back and start to press through that paper. At this stage, if you've used thin, thin scrapbooking paper, you've got an advantage because this thick paper is quite tough to get through. So I'm going to give it a few pushes with my knife to get a nice semicircular shape. see if that's enough yes that's popped it up and I've got an eraser somewhere just to take off the pencil marks and make it look nice doesn't show much on my paper but it might do on yours if you've got darker paper okay let's get it back with the flap up at the top and now we come to the fun bit where you're going to put in the photographs what you need to do is choose a selection of your favourite photographs on a, on a theme, perhaps a holiday that you've had or something like that. And you need to copy them over on, on your computer and then print them out really small. So as you can see, I did cut and paste here and I copy, 
cut them out and pop them onto one document. I've got eight small ones on there, which means that would be about the right size that I want. Altogether, you need 10 pictures or quotations or whatever you're going to put in. Okay. And I printed them out on really thin paper. It's so thin you can actually see them through from the back. But this is great. It's no use to using photo paper or something really thick and good quality because your little uh, mini album will be so thick once we've got all these layers in that it wouldn't fold over properly. So thin is good. Copy paper's great. So you're going to print those out and then cut out a selection of them that you want. So I've cut some out in rectangles. I've cut some out in circles. Fancy edges, some of them. Whatever you fancy. There's Mickey. That's a rectangle. Now, if you need to crop something off a picture, just do a wiggly, sort of casual, abstract shape. It doesn't need to be square, round or anything else. It can be whatever you want it to be. And I did a couple of them where I did some words on it. I put amazing under that one. I put live, laugh, love on the here. You might want to put perhaps the name of the place, the name of the people that are on the photograph and in your album, or whatever you would like to do. So... Once you've got those ready, you can start to just glue them into place. The first one I do is this one, the third one down, because it's the one with that semicircle. And you've got to remember not to put any glue over that one. So I'm going to put this colourful one in straight away. Just a little bit of PVA glue around the edge. Whoops, I'm going to leave the centre unglued and pop it down there. Lovely. So that that bump still pops out on the other side. Yeah, we're good. Fill out the rest then as you wish. Let's have a look what we've got. Let's have the, uh, the gator down at the bottom. Looking good. What else have we got? Some Star Wars figures on this side. Ooh, my favourite cake here. Chocolate Gatto from Disney. Maybe here. Oh, SeaWorld. Got to have my dolphins in. Let's put those in here. And we better have Cinderella Castle. Popped in there. Just nice. Great. Okay. So that's the inside all done, but you're going to put some photos on the outside. But if you look again at that first one that I showed you, you'll see that some of the pictures have to be upside down because when you roll it, see, when you roll it, that one has to be upside down. But rather than trying to work out which one's which, just start to fold your mini album clothes so, and put your pictures on as we go. So you're going to fold the side in and put a picture there. Let's have Mickey. Looking good. We're going to fold the side in here. And, oh yeah, I've got a picture here of Lake Eola Park in Orlando. And the next thing you're going to do is roll up the bottom and put one on there. So you really can't go wrong if you're rolling it up because you know which way it's going to have to look. Like that. Fold the side in again, and I've got a wood stalk hanging out by the lake. Fold, fold, and it tucks in under that little tab that we made really nicely and stays closed. Okay, nice and neat. The only thing you've got to finish off with now is perhaps you want to decorate the front. You've got maybe some stickers, some writing, whatever you fancy. It, it's yours, uh, it's your album to do with as you wish. And the interesting thing is that everybody's album will be totally different. So finish it off as you like. I hope you've enjoyed making that and I hope that you'll enjoy looking through your photographs while you're making this and it'll pass a day or so of time while we're stuck indoors. It's a reminder of happy times when we've been on vacation with our family and friends. So until next time, I hope you um, have fun with this, looking around in your house and adapting to whatever you've got available if you don't have many crafting tools. Um, I'll be back next time to show you how to make some beautiful greeting cards using napkins. So get ready for that. 
thanks for watching. Bye.